All right, guys, stay tuned. I think this is one of my best videos yet. I'll just give you a sneak peek. We hooked into an absolute mega giant. All I'm saying is, is when you set the hook and you think you're in a log and the log doesn't move and then the log does move and it feels like a little tugboat is pulling your line and you can't pull it up, that's when you know you have a good one, guys. So stay tuned. Today, we're gonna be checking out this guy's Wacky Worm setup. Howdy, everyone. You probably know who that is. If you don't, I'll just tell you that is the GOAT, AKA the Bob Ross of Fishing in the Yak Angler. I absolutely love his channel. I subscribe to him, you should too. One of the things he does that is unique is the way in which he fishes the tried and true Wacky Worm. So most people, like myself, throw it on something probably like a 6.8 to a 7 or 7.1 medium spinning rod. Faster, extra fast action probably. He throws it on a 6'8 St. Croix, and a lot of times brand isn't that important. When it comes to finesse, St. Croix, that brand is important because their tips are a lot more limber, parabolic, soft, whatever you want to call it, and it really helps you fling those light lures out. So he throws it on a 6'8 St. Croix medium extra fast with a Daiwa Tatula or a Daiwa Zillion, and I'll roll on his setup here in a minute, by the way. I just have a Tatula because you haven't hit that like button yet and I can't afford the zillion. So hit that like so I can put a zillion on this. Anyways, 15 to 20 pound braid to a five or six foot 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. The one Ock Gamagatsu EWG red hook, not the super line one, but the thinner wire one. And then you know what Senko he's throwing. He is throwing the Yum Dinger five inch watermelon gold flake with the heat shrink tubing. So. I pre-rigged up a pack, tried these out for the first time. I've never fished the Yum Dinger. I caught fish all night long on them, so I'm gonna keep using them because they're a cheaper option. Uh, but stay tuned, guys. Let me know what you thought. We caught fish all night long. I hope you enjoy this. Let's get to the first fish. I'll give you guys a quick look at the setup I'm throwing here today. So I've got a watermelon gold flake Yum Dinger tied on, and I've got that rigged up on a one aught Gamakatsu EWG Red Hook. And I do use a little piece of heat shrink tubing. I've got the clear stuff, and then I run the hook through that heat shrink. That allows me to catch probably about 20 fish on one worm. And I'm throwing that on my six foot eight, medium power, extra fast, St. Croix Legend Tournament rod. I've got a Daiwa Tatula reel, and I'm running 15 pound braid on that with about a six foot liter of 12 pound fluorocarbon. It's my super sensitivity setup. And we may be out here just a hair early, but like I said, I wanted to beat some others out. Since I came here yesterday and people were already here, I just let them have it. My thoughts are it would mean a lot more those kids to go out and have a really good day with dad fishing they have it all to themselves and it would be for me to catch my 3,000th fish on a wacky worm so let's see it's a little bit windy I don't know if you saw I cast it out there but my braid got wrapped around that tree over over there and it pretty much ruined it uh oh there we go got one got something it's not Monster. All right. Very cool. Boop. Got a nice one. A nice one to start. Look at that. A thick one. It's kind of got it choked. Respect the goat, Indie Angler. Guess what? <laughs> In case you've never watched one of his videos, this setup works. Oh, that's cool. Thing I'm curious about is to see how many fish we get with that uh with that heat shrink wrap. It's the first time I've ever heat shrinked one. This fish isn't huge, but for his size, pretty hefty. So very cool. Hopefully there's many more. That big old thump. I might should have put him on the scale. I didn't think he was, I thought he was just a dink at first because when I set the hook, he must have been running right at me. 
that our wacky worm worked. worked. It's in good shape. I just want to make you proud, Mr. Goat. Mr. Goat Yak Angler. I guess I should have done this really right and started the day by saying, Hey everybody, well it's another beautiful day out here in Minnesota. I'm not in Minnesota, but that's what he says. Hey everybody, a beautiful day. So that seemed to work. I had that fish pinned. Got my drag tight-ish. I don't want to bend that hook out. Maybe I'll go a hair tire and break my leader. Yeah, it's probably as tight as I need to go. Very similar to that last one. Two, three pounder. He's not as big as the last one. Look at that. Got the classic wacky stash. That's it, we've got that drag set just fine. in there. Well so far this is working out. There you go buddy. So I'll say this and it has me encouraged. The last couple times I've been out here well, like a month or two ago, I thought the fish were here on the thin side, and I would say across the board, they're in a little bit better shape, so just for the health of the pond and all that, that makes me feel really good. Like I said, this pond doesn't really have much grass in it. And bass can live in a pond with no grass, but I just feel like they don't really thrive in it. Got those brings cranked up tight. I meant to place that about a foot further. But it stopped it. There we go. It worked. Oh, that almost carried me off. Let's get it back in there. I was getting carried off. Let's see if he's back. But I felt that bite very well. bit we've had several bites we just haven't hooked up on every fish I guess that's going to get left in the video now. <laughs> uh, all right. 
trying to be a family channel, but sometimes you just can't help it. I say this, they're choking that. Sometimes when you're getting pecked like that, you just gotta stick with it and keep pulling it in there. Eventually they will commit. He is bleeding. So I'm gonna get him back in pretty quick. Thanks, buddy. And he's off. saved him this tree it's a hard thing about pond fishing I can't always hit everywhere I want to hit or fish it how I want to fish it because of vegetation but that's part of the fun game nested and I saw our worm go flying I don't know if we still have our hook in my experience some grass right there. Time will tell if that's a good or a bad thing for us. The best day I've ever had on a uh, wacky worm. I was just about to say, <laughs> the best day I've ever had on a wacky one, I was throwing it just right in here and there's a bunch of grass. And I pulled out a bunch of chunks. And what's crazy with that is it wasn't even a great wacky setup. I got a cheap little rod from uh, Walmart. I was setting up for a friend who had access to a spot to use. And, uh, I think I had mono on it, even. I was just throwing that KVD Ocho in there and was crushing it. There you go. See a feller. All right. Maybe there will be a seven pounder uh, down there somewhere.
big. I set the hook and didn't even fill him. He just ran right at me. This is the size. That's how you usually get them on the wacky. Right there on the top of the mouth. He's the same one all through this strip, just pecking at it. I mean, he just barely pecked at it there, but I felt that slight little tick. I told myself if I feel anything, I'm not going to wait for him to run with it. I'm just going to set the hook. And it got him. myself and I feel those little ticks. I'm not gonna I'm gonna go mess around with it. I'm just gonna set that hook. Just gonna set the hook and let this happen. Hopefully we didn't just ruin up the audio. We didn't ruin the audio for the entire video. That would stink. I don't know how many fish we've caught. I've lost count. say his and we had to retire hook once you see that paint fading on into yak anglers a lot where you know that worm's been sliding up and down from catching fish that's kind of what we've been having i noticed the first one was starting to do that some all right oh lost our worm again it slid look I just heard it hit. So we got our keeper, but lost our worm. Okay, hey, that's why we're out here trying this out. That is why we're out here trying this out. But that's why we also rigged up a whole pack. So we are three fish in. Absolute monster. Oh, that again. I doubt it's the same one. That was 
That's the biggest fish I've hooked into in a long time. I'm very excited to see what this polarized lens shows. I'm very, all I could see was something huge and a big white spot going across there. something to dream about. The one that got away. That was a child. Too. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. He's not as good as the last one. Oh man, he's good though. He's good. That's a three pounder. Oh yeah. And don't you jump. Problem is, I don't know how we get him up here. There we go. That's a good one. Not as good as who we lost. That's a really nice one. Let's put you good, sir. Or gal. On this gal. Because you are worthy. You are worthy of the scale. Alright, let's get this zeroed with our fish grip. Sealed with the gripper. Let's see what we got. Almost three, 214. Interesting, okay. Well, hey, I enjoyed you. Oh man, about to rip my, rip my hand. but we caught a good one almost a three pounder but i feel like once you start getting into that three three and a half pound range they start getting pretty fun let's get re-rigged i'm gonna do it all again I've lost count of how many fish we've caught. Here we go. Oh, I just got it again. I thought it was about to be one more to whatever the count was. Come back for it. Come back for it. We 1,000% got a hit. I'm going to bring it in and get it back in there. Because I don't. But he probably felt our hook. You couldn't resist the goat's wacky worm, could you? You couldn't resist it. Ow. I'm gonna have my thumb torn up by the time this is done. <laughs> Alrighty. 
Another good one. Guys, it's absolutely beautiful out here. It is Memorial Day weekend. Shout out, again, I already said this in the video, but just shout out to everyone who who has served. I've got family. I'm sure we all do or have friends or know someone. So shout out to y'all for making this all happen. All right. Let's get our bait back in there. Say we threw it right there by that. It's a cover. I should have had one. And we did. But it was short lived. I don't know if my hook up ratio is as good. I don't know if it's the hook. I don't know if it's the heat shrink wrap that's not moving up. It's something. I'm just not quite getting as hooked up as always. On a wacky worm. Like the wacky worm is almost always. There we go. Automatic form. Hey, get back here. No, don't go over there. Oh, might be a good one. Might be a good one. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. Yep. Maybe another three pounder. Another three pounder. I knew you hit this before. I knew you hit us before, old buddy. Another good one. Another good one. Man, he choked it. And that is, that is in there. All right, let's get the pliers. Actually, put him on the scale. I don't know, he'll be high two, low three like the other one. Hey, it's a good day when we've gotten the scale out twice. And we almost needed it for a mega. I think that one would have contended with our PB that we lost. All right. Get you zeroed out with the gripper. I don't love this Berkeley scale. All right, zeroed out. I need to figure out a better scale. One ounce. Uh, three zero. Two and a half. Yeah, I thought he had been two, three something. He's a fun one though. Fun size. Get you over there. Go back in. Get the slime off of her hands. This is almost not even red anymore. Giving up on the cast like an idiot. Like an idiot. Looked like a good one too. Maybe he didn't fill our hooks. That's why you don't give up on the cast. A couple of these fish we've caught. I was just about to give up on the cast. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. That was an absolutely awesome night. I am still sick about that mega that got off. The GoPro didn't pick up a ton, but when I set that hook, it felt like it didn't even move at first, and then it slowly started going across, and the GoPro picked up some boils that came up, but I could see a white flash, and I mean, that thing's body looked like it was like that thick. Absolute monster bass. Um, 
the biggest fish I've hooked into into a long time. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed putting it together. I'm gonna be doing a series on a few more popular YouTubers fishing setups. Just give my thoughts um, and how I feel about them. So if you like that, stay tuned. When it comes to Indie Yak Angler's Wacky Worm setup, I liked it. Um, you know, you never know what's hitting your lure. I felt like I got some bites that when I set the hook, I didn't get the fish. It could have been a bluegill or a crappie for all I know, because they're both in that pond. Um, I'm going to keep fishing it. And if my thoughts evolve, then maybe I'll pin a comment or something. But I really liked the setup. I thought overall it worked really well. Um, I'm not sure if the worm lasted as long as I thought it would have uh, with the heat shrink wrap, but it still lasted well. You could cast it pretty good. And uh, one thing about the M Dinger, I am typically a Senko or Bass Pro Sticko man with the occasional uh, KVD Ocho mixed in. But one of the things I noticed with the Yum Dinger, it seemed like it had a significantly slower fall, maybe less action as far as the flutter, but a really slow fall and the bass liked it. So if they liked it, I liked it guys. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this one. I had a great time last night and stay tuned for more.